Hey, brothers and sisters. So I've gotten a lot of questions and comments regarding the parable of the wise and foolish virgins. Does this parable uh, apply to the people in the tribulation at the second coming of Christ? Or does this parable uh, speak to the rapture of the church? Well, I think it has double meaning, and here's why. We know that uh, the second coming, Jesus is also uh, telling people to watch and be ready for you know not when the Son of Man comes. Okay, and a lot of people won't be those types of people that are able to calculate the seven year tribulation out. We know that the Bible will be banned. It'll be very hard for people. Uh, we know some people will, but the majority of people will be foolish, I think. But regarding the rapture of the church, um, I believe this parable gives a, a beautiful uh, picture of the rapture and being ready for the rapture. So Jesus gave us a clear picture of what readiness looks like in this parable in Matthew 25. Uh, verses 1 through 8. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, they were, uh, the cry rang out, Here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps, and the foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, our lamps are going out. Jesus then described the desperate attempt of the foolish virgins to obtain oil from the wise ones. They were unsuccessful, and while they left to buy oil, the bridegroom came. The parable concluded with the five foolish maidens unable to attend the feast. Understanding Hebrew wedding customs of the time is essential to applying Jesus' parable in Matthew 25. In Christ's day, the wedding would commence when the bridegroom arrived and he would appear at the time of his own choosing. His coming could be within the range of certain days or weeks, so the bridal party had to be prepared at any moment. Often the bridegroom would delight in trying to catch them napping. The ladies would often have a lookout who would stay awake during the night to warn the party of his approach. Then they would meet the groom on the street and then proceed to the festivities. The lesson of Jesus is that there are some things that cannot be left to the last minute, and there are some responsibilities that cannot be transferred to someone else. Each of us is responsible to be ready for the coming of Christ, regardless of the day or the hour. The oil that the wise virgin saved was that of the Holy Spirit, a common reference in the Old and New Testament. In Romans chapter 8, verse 9, Paul wrote that the indwelling Holy Spirit prepares us to meet Christ at his return. Paul's letter to the Ephesians tells us that the Holy Spirit is the engagement ring or deposit for the believer that promises Christ's commitment to his bride when we arrive at the heavenly wedding. You also were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Having believed, you were marked in him with the seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit, guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory, Ephesians 1, 13 and 14. The Old Testament word, Arab, describes a security deposit or an engagement pledge. The similar New Testament word, Arabam, connotes part of the purchase money or property given in advance as a security for the rest. This wonderful word picture assures us that if we have the Holy Spirit inside of us as believers, we are guaranteed a seat at the wedding feast. Have you ever struggled with the assurance of your salvation? Read John or 1 John excuse me, John 10, 27 through 30. Have you invited Christ into your life? Don't be like those foolish bridesmaids who waited until the last minute to purchase oil, or in this case, get the Holy Spirit. We know that we see a parallel that Jesus' response speaks to these five foolish virgins as being unconverted, unsaved people. Listen to what he says. Afterward, the other virgins came, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. 
And then in Matthew 25, we see a parallel with this passage. Excuse me, Matthew 7, we see a parallel with Matthew 25. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Clearly, these foolish virgins did not possess the oil, the Holy Spirit, and never knew Christ. They never had a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Choose Christ today and do not be like these foolish virgins. I believe the parable of the wise and foolish virgins has application to the church age as well as to the tribulation when people will fail to realize that Christ is coming. Be ready today.